Hi, not sure if you've noticed, but we're in a bit of a summer holiday lull when it comes to watch industry and and it's just watch news. So like a lot of other people, I've decided to go back and have a look at some of my older videos and see if there's anything in there that's changed that I'd like to say again that I think is worth sort of bringing up. And I think a lot of the earlier videos I did around watch collecting and how to do it well um, actually could do with a bit of a refresh. So I'm going to get into that. I'm going to start by talking about what was originally three videos. I'm now going to, only going to do one. My three essential rules for watch collecting. This is watch collecting 101. Follow these three rules and you won't go far wrong. Hi, I'm Pete McConville. Welcome to my channel where I overthink, overanalyze, and just geek out on watches far too much. Today, what I want to talk about is like the three essential rules of watch collecting. Ground zero. Get these things right and everything else will sort of look after itself. Now, I have done these videos. I have done covered this topic before about three years ago. Hopefully I'm better at this now than I was then. And one key thing you're going to notice is I'm much more concise. Last time this was three videos. Now it's going to be one and I'm going to see if I can keep it pretty short. So the first thing is a disclaimer. I didn't make these rules up. I've stolen them. Not from another watch YouTuber, not from another watch magazine. In fact, I've stolen them from ancient Greece, from the uh, temple, the Oracle of Delphi. The Oracle of Delphi was actually a bank more than it was a religious institution. And because it was a bank, like every other bank, it was linked to a whole bunch of other financial institutions. That gave it both intelligence about how much an individual was worth and let them do finance stuff. But it also meant that they had intelligence about what was going on in all the other places. So the Oracle of Delphi had a relationship with another financial institution, the Oracle of Alexandria, and therefore knew about things like wheat prices in Egypt more than other people did. That intelligence gave them the ability to act like an oracle. You could walk in as a farmer and say, should I plant wheat this year? The oracle, having some sense of what wheat prices were doing in, say, Egypt, would be able to give you an answer like, this looks like a good year for wheat. The problem was the oracle could never be certain. One, its intelligence was the intelligence of 600 BCE. It was slow and it was it was often out of date, not entirely correct. Also, they didn't know much about you. They don't know your context. So to keep that under control, to prepare people to receive the intelligence, to receive the uh, premonitions and the and the the recommendations and the advice of the oracle, the oracle had three. Uh, uh, what would you call, I had three sayings, had three aphorisms, had three things for you to remember when you got this advice. And these, these pieces of advice, these tools are equally useful to you as a watch collector as you start through the process of gathering information and learning about watches and learning about watch culture and learning about watch industry from people like me and all the other YouTubers out there. So rule number one, know thyself, know who you are, know what kind of person you are, know what, how you like to collect, know what inspires you, know what puts you off, know what you don't like, what you do like, know your wrist size, know your ideas about what you can and cannot wear, know what you're allowed, what you can afford, know if you are likely to be a flipper or not, know all of that stuff in advance. You don't have to know anything about watches to know that stuff. If you've collected shoes before, if you've collected cameras before, if you were a kid growing up and looking at other products and thinking about what you would like to have and what you wouldn't like to have, 
you already are down the path of knowing who you are and how you're likely to engage in this watch hobby. Think about what movies you like. Think about what characters you like. Think about what people you like and how they engage in the hobby. If you're like a person, you want to be like that person, what that person does is the sort of things that you would like to be doing, then there's a way you can get some sense of these are the kinds of watches I like, this is what I'd like to do. So however it is, it doesn't matter what the answers are, know who you are and you're on the path to being able to understand what advice is useful to you and what advice is not. Rule number two is everything in moderation. And it's really simple. It just means don't get carried away. Don't buy 50 watches in the first week before the first couple of watches have come in and you've had a chance to sort of test and adjust. Don't spend more than you can afford. Don't watch any one person too much. Try and spread your knowledge around, spread your, your media consumption around. Just don't get carried away on any one thing. Just give yourself some time. Don't overspend on money. Don't overinvest on any one person's opinion. Just take everything in moderation. Rule number three for watch collecting. In certainty, there is ruin. There's actually a whole bunch. The, the rule number three, the, the actual last uh, sort of axiom of the oracle is debated. I like the one that says uh, surety leads to ruin, but there are other alternative meanings. Basically, what it that last one means is always account for the fact you might not know everything. Always be ready for the fact that there might be something that you don't know yet. Or always be ready for the fact that what you know, what you are absolutely certain of, might not actually be true. And that is so true in the watch world. I have seen so many people say, I can't wear this watch because it's too big. Not knowing that that company makes a watch which is smaller. I can't wear a Breitling because they're big and they're garish and they're all super polished. Not realizing that's the brand of 10 years ago, that the Breitling of today is completely different. Or that um, I won't buy that watch unless I can get a 30% discount. Not realizing no one's giving those sorts of discounts anymore or that particular watch is a boutique only and you are not going to get a discount out of that boutique. There's all of these things that people in the watch world know to be true deep in their heart that are flat out wrong, that just are not true. What I would suggest to you is if you find yourself thinking this is absolutely positively true, that is probably a sign you might want to check. You might want to make sure that that is in fact the case. Because as I said, if, if you watch the comments and if you watch people's sort of these sorts of videos from people where they'll go, this is absolutely the case. This is a waste of money or this can't be. If you dig into it, people are wrong so, so often. So anyway, those are my three rules of watch collecting. One, know yourself, know who you are, know what you like, know, think about what you do in other parts of your life. You're going to do watch collecting much the same way. Do that. Two, don't get carried away. Do everything to moderation. Don't get yourself into, into too much debt. Don't uh, go out and buy 50 watches at once. Don't just listen to one person and think they're the, they're the if you like, the oracle of all truth. Um, be prepared to spread yourself around. Be prepared to wait. Be prepared to, to uh, try lots of little things. Rule number three, don't be certain that you know everything you think you know. Be prepared to test yourself. Be prepared to check your facts, check your stories. In particular, kind of like the more certain you are this is true, the more care you might want to take with that information. So anyway, they're my three rules. Uh, that's my quick recap on them. I've been Pete McConville. Uh, this is what I do at this channel. If you like it, like, subscribe, do all that good YouTube stuff, and we will see each other later. Bye.